So this past season was hands down my best gardening season that I've ever had. It's the first time that I've had big baskets of produce coming out of the garden multiple times throughout the season and throughout the harvest. And so much so that I ended up kind of being known as the kale fairy around my neighborhood because I would leave people bundles of kale and Swiss chard at their doorstep for them to enjoy. And I attribute a good amount of this success this past season to kind of consciously and intentionally wrapping up the previous season. So the very end of 2020, there were a couple of things that I did to prepare my garden beds for winter to ultimately increase my harvest for the 2021 season. And today I'm gonna to walk you through my four tips for preparing your garden for winter. And so where we actually get started is not in the garden, but rather inside. So let's head it that way. Plant I see you. So the first step of preparing your garden for winter is to come inside and to do a little bit of reflection on this past season. So right now, all of our insights, our learnings, our experience from this past gardening season are fresh and top of mind. And so before we go into the winter and we begin kind of putting this season into the rear view mirror, let's spend a couple of minutes reflecting on this past season. And to help you with this, I've put together a guide for preparing your garden for winter. And in that has the four questions that I ask myself at the end of the season as part of my reflection process. Now keep in mind that my philosophy when it comes to gardening is that it should be something that helps us feel peace and calm and restoration and joy and happiness. And so the questions that I have in there are not simply what grew best, what didn't grow so well, but much more focused on what brought you joy, what excited you, what was feeling a little bit more like a chore. And by going through those questions, that's going to help inform the season ahead for you. And so if you want those questions and the full guide for preparing your garden for winter, then all that you need to do is go down into the description on this video and click on that very first link that takes you over to our website where you're able to download this guide. Now I'm going to share my answers to these questions in a follow along video in a few weeks time where I reflect on the past season. But for now, it's time to head back out into the garden for step number two of preparing your garden for winter. I know that mine is black and white. I printed it in black and white because I don't like to pay for color ink, but the one online is in color and it is beautiful. You should check it out. Now let's head outside. And so tip number two for prepping your garden for winter is that we need to remove and pull out all of our annuals. And so our annuals are our plants that aren't going to grow back the following season. Those would be our perennials, which I have over here, and we're gonna cover off on how we close those ones for winter in a separate video. It's going to be linked above once it is live. But for our annuals, like our tomatoes, our cucumbers, our squashes, zucchinis, peppers, etc., those we want to pull out of the garden. Now, common question that we get when it comes to pulling our vegetables out of the garden is do we actually physically pull them and yank them out of the garden, pulling that whole root system out with it, or do we cut the main stem where it enters into the soil? And now another part of kind of, I guess, my gardening philosophy is that there isn't a right way to garden and a wrong way to garden, but rather a number of different approaches that will work. And so for myself personally, I actually pull the entire plant out. The reason why I do that is because what I've found is that as we get into these really cold winter months before next season, there just isn't enough time and warmth for the root system to break down beneath the surface in the soil on its own. So I'd rather get that out so I've got a nice blank canvas for next season. And the second part to that is that our rooted vegetables like our garlic, like our carrots, like our beets, we're pulling those rooted vegetables out of the garden, which is definitely, you know, kind of disrupting that soil ecosystem beneath the surface. But in each of those instances, those beds have continued to perform really, really well for me. So I am not as concerned about actually pulling a vegetable out from the garden. And so to do that, all I do is I grab it right here and yank. Okay, so the beds are now all cleared from the annuals that were growing in there. And step three of preparing your garden for winter is to add compost and mulch onto these beds. Now, when we think about these beds, they have been working so hard for the last five or six months 
the tomatoes that were here, the peppers that were right next door, and then the zucchinis, cucumbers that are out throughout the yard, they've been pulling and pulling nutrients from the soil. And so this soil that we have, it's probably at its most depleted state right now. And rather than waiting until April, maybe even March, a little bit earlier, to begin putting compost into those beds and begin to rejuvenate it, we want to begin that process right now in the fall leading into winter. And so all that we need to do is grab about one inch of compost, just a nice little layer to put on top. We're gonna then dump it down onto the beds and then we're just gonna spread that evenly across the bed. The next piece to it is that we want to add a mulch. And one of the great parts about fall is that we've got all of these leaves that are coming down from the trees. And this is brilliant, brilliant organic matter that we want to be getting into our beds. So for our mulch, all that we need to do is just rake up a whole bunch of it and then pop it into the bed here and then kind of spread it out nice and evenly across. So I was meaning to get one or two more videos of putting the leaves onto the bed there. But as I had raked them all the way across to this end, I realized I had totally just kind of zoned out, forgot that I even had the video rolling and recording during that time. And I was just totally in kind of that gardening Zen state of mind. And yeah, just out there thinking, dreaming, all that stuff. So feels good, feels good to garden. Let's get back to it. <laughs> All right, so I've got a bonus tip for you that goes alongside tip number four. But just before we dive into that, if you've gotten any value, any entertainment, if you're feeling more comfortable and confident with preparing your garden for the winter, then go ahead, leave us a like, a comment down below. Really helps us get in front of new gardeners. And for those of you that I have not met before, my name's Jordan from Mind and Soil, where we're looking to introduce a million individuals to gardening's mental health benefits. So if you're looking to feel kind of the more peacefulness, more calmness, more restoration in your life, then go ahead ahead and subscribe. We release new videos every single week to help you get your hands dirty and can't wait to be growing with you. So the bonus tip that I have for you that goes alongside tip number four is that with these leaves that we've put onto our beds, we want to kind of stack them up in the middle so that the middle is a little bit taller um, and then kind of fans to the outside or cascades to the outside of the bed. Don't ask why, don't worry about it. You're going to find out in just a second. So go ahead and kind of pile those leaves into the middle there. Okay, so we've piled the leaves up in the middle, which I'm about to explain the importance of, which brings us to the fourth and final tip for preparing your garden for the winter. So you've done it, you've given your beds really everything that it needs to really start resting, recharging, rejuvenating for the season ahead to have an amazing crop. And that fourth and final tip for prepping your garden for winter is to take some form of a cover and put it over top. That could be a tarp, that could be landscape fabric, it could even be cardboard. And all that you want to do is take that covering and just kind of lay it over top of the bed so that all the leaves are covered. And so the purpose of this is really threefold. The first one is that for the winter winds, it's just going to protect these leaves and prevent them from ultimately getting blown off of the bed. The second piece is that it's adding a layer of insulation to the microbes and organisms beneath the surface to keep them a little bit warmer so that they can continue to work away at breaking down that organic matter into new nutrients for next season. And then the third piece is that it's gonna protect it from the rains as well. And that's the soil that it's protecting. And by doing that little bonus tip of adding it up in the middle, it's created this cascading feature where now when the rain hits it, it's going to be running off the side of the bed rather than down through the soil. And this is going to ensure that as little leaching happens as possible and all the nutrients that are getting freed up by those microbes and organisms are staying in the bed. And there we have it. You've done it. You've prepped your garden beds for the winter. You've tucked them in with compost and mulch to begin rejuvenating, recharging for the next season. So all that means is now you got to head inside, start warming up and print out that guide so that you can go through those questions to reflect on the season. Again, the link to download it is down in the description down below. And if you've had a lot of fun on this video, then go ahead and check out some of our other videos such as how to overwinter those pepper plants that I just pulled out, how to be hot compost and a whole lot more. So that's all for right now, folks. Can't wait to catch you on the next one. Go get those hands dirty and I'll see you soon.